Yo, Soldier Talk Nation, on this week's episode, we'll be covering Fuego releases from Hyana, Dawn, Bandit, and One Team. We'll also be cooking up some spicy news coverage, including the impact of the Produce 101 arrests on Eyes 1 and X1, CL officially leaves YG Entertainment, and the global partnerships for Super M, NTT 127, and G Idol. So prepare your body, get yourself jopping, because today we're announcing a Super M giveaway. Hit me with that intro! Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 60, and we're recording on Monday, November 11th, 2019. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Anita. Hello. <laughs> and, and, okay, and Warren, oh, oh hey, hey, what's up? Here? No, but Warren um, is not joining <laughs> us this week. It's his first time missing the main pod recording. Um, yes. Some of you know, if you listen to the end of the last episode, Warren is moving to New York City. He's in New York City right now looking for an apartment. So he he is free to record right now <laughs> because I've been messaging him for like the last 20 minutes. But he's in a hotel room with his parents. It would be a little bit awkward if he's doing a podcast sitting in a hotel room with his parents. So understandably, he will not be here, as you can see if you're watching the YouTube video. But shout out to Warren. He should be back by next week at the latest. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a quick reminder, though, please leave us feedback, questions, or hot takes at sojutalkpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe to the Soju Talk YouTube channel, join the Soju Talk Discord, and be a part of the Soju Talk Nation. Links will be in the video description. Okay, shout outs, announcements, and on shelf. Well, we don't really do on shelf that much. It's Eyes One stuff this week, you know. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit of a struggle. We will talk about that yes. later in the pod. But on a happier note, in celebration of fall. Pumpkin Spice, oh. New Adventures for Warren, oh. and the love Soju Talk Nation has given us along the way. I am happy to announce the Super M Jopping Giveaway. Wow. <laughs> we will be giving away two albums. Not one, but Damn. two albums. One on YouTube and one on Discord. If you're on if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the audio podcast on audio like a podcast platform, please go to YouTube to enter. Just be subscribed to us there and leave a comment on the episode 60 video. On Discord, type anything in the Jopping Giveaway channel. The giveaway is open to anyone, people here in the US, internationally, and even if Antarctica if you're over there like it could be freezing out there we will somehow try to get you this maybe like we'll get some sleigh dogs to bring you this album we'll try to make it happen um we will randomly pick a winner next monday night on november 18th at 7 p.m eastern when we record episode 61 and the winners will be announced during that episode so next wednesday okay whew, got all through all that super m dropping mm -hmm. albums they looking pretty nice yo wow not, not gonna, not gonna lie. but um Let's get into the big new releases for this week. So November 5th was a pretty big day last Tuesday. We got Hyuna's Flower Shower, Dawn's Money, Bandit's Dumb. And then on November 6th, Wednesday, we got one team with Make This. But let's start at the top with Hyuna's Flower Shower. Anina, I'm going to let you give the first takes on this. Okay, well... I was very pleasantly surprised with this mm -hmm. from Hyuna. Because I, I was curious what as her first comeback after leaving uh cube entertainment so this was a little bit unexpected but i'm happy how it turned out i like how she mixed a lot of i don't know i feel like this was a perfect representation of like her very like playful kind of cutesy mm -hmm. side but still like the more sexy yeah. uh, image that she also has so i thought it was very very well done in that sense yeah, I, I kind of agree with you because um I, I think there was a growing like people generally felt that while she was at Cube, at least in her early solo debut, they kind of really pushed sexy concepts on her when that's not really who she is mm -hmm. as a person. So as Anita mentioned, this is her first mm -hmm. song with P Nation. This is the first releases from P Nation. Oh no, it's yes. not. We had Jesse stuff. Jesse, we yeah, had Jesse, Jesse stuff. Was, but this is the first like mm -hmm. I would consider pure K-pop releases from the company. So Hyuna debuted back in 2007 with Wonder Girls, 2009 with Four Minute, and then 2011 as a solo artist. Last three songs: Lip and Hip, Babe, Morning Glory. She has 23 wins with Four Minute, four as a solo artist. And as you said, humongous concept change from Lip and Hip, which is. Mm -hmm. For a lack of a better term, like a, a thought anthem, as some people would call it. <laughs> I don't know. But um, this is more back to like a retro funky sound, sort of like in Babe, I would say. Um, mm. P Nation's in the house. I thought that the drop was so whimsical and aesthetic. Like, mm, yes. I'm not the even talking. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking the video plus the sound itself. It was like whimsical, mm -hmm. I thought. And 
man, Hyona is a top tier performer. The way she yes. eats the camera mm-hmm. with her eyes, right? Like <laughs> ridiculous. And then I thought the music video looked great. And I think for once in a long time, she looks truly happy with what she's doing on the screen. She enjoyed it. I feel like you could tell she mm-hmm. was enjoying performing and recording. I don't know. I like that. I like maybe this is more. I think maybe this is the first time where it's more of an accurate representation of who she is as mm-hmm. both an artist and a person. So yeah. I'm happy if this is closer and that's. Yeah, I, I'm completely down for artists expressing themselves how they actually want to be represented. And mm-hmm. it seems like P Nation is really giving the artists the freedom to do that. Like, I know people call them like a land of mm-hmm. misfit toys, but I think it's really just a, going to become a place where artists can truly express themselves is the better way to put it. Yes. But I did get Warren thoughts on all of these songs oh, okay. and the hot take. So Warren said, um, well, he felt that Flower Shower was a lot more clean than her recent works, which he felt had been leaning too deeply into sexy concepts. I, that makes sense. Um, he mm-hmm. liked the minimal, m- minimal and playful arrangement. He's usually oh. not a fan of Hyuna's voice tone, but in this song, it really brought it out in an approachable way. And then he said, finally, again, less is more. A song doesn't need 5,000 instruments to sound great. I agree. I kind of agree agree with all those takes, you know? Mm -hmm. Overall, though, really light. But it's like a a light song, but it hits hard at the same time. I don't know how to describe it, but... The chorus. I feel like the chorus still retains that very, like, iconic Hyuna dance Mm -hmm. break and, like... The confidence that she exudes when she dances so i feel like it's still very much i don't know i feel like it has like the best parts of what we know of hyuna and her solo stuff yeah. in previous occasions but it, it adds something new here and, I, and i'm glad it's it's a little different yeah I'm, I'm i'm completely glad that she's just back in general too right like yes <laughs> it's been a while i know she was on running man um this past week too so check her out over there but let's now move on to her boy toy you know don with his song <laughs> money which is his solo debut you probably know him best from his um, work in well his debut in 2016 with pentagon he is now also under p nation mm. of course he has zero music show wins because he's a solo artist but well it's a solo debut that's how that's what i meant but for me mm-hmm. super impressed with this like did not see this coming from don yeah like e- yeah okay don. so it used to be e don now we're just now. going by don but you know it's like, I don't want to say I had low expectations, but I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it, this could have been anything, right? But, yeah, man, he, he, went, he took some risks here, and I want to commend him for that. The first thing I noticed, his vocal quality is very similar to G-Dragon. Yes, the vibes, the, the, vibes. the atmosphere, very much solo stuff from G-Dragon. Yeah, like his tone, his note selection... The way he, mm-hmm. like, his angstiness, very G-Dragon-esque, which I really like. Um, You can tell that both Hyuna and Dawn, these songs are super artist-driven. Because there's no way, like, a yes. company would push this on someone. They would be like, I want to do this kind of theme. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Another thing I noticed in terms of the cinematography, they had, a, like, very few cuts in the in the filming. Like, there was a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. camera motion, and I thought that Wanting. was really refreshing. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, there was one part in the chorus where he says, like dirty money dirty bit uh-huh. right yeah yeah so he it sounds like he's saying the word i'm gonna chris here sorry everyone he it sounds like he's saying dirty money dirty bitch right that's what it uh-huh. sounded like but it's a playful use of the korean word bit which means light right mm-hmm. i thought that was very clever um another thing i noticed was that the only time the music video has any like light moments is when there's flower petals everywhere Reference. reference reference maybe a oh, reference to oh. Hyuna? i don't know oh. and then my last take was i prefer this to flower shower oh. just gonna put that out there but anita how do you say yeah interesting but what do you feel about this anita i don't know i feel like in a similar way i also got very much g dragon solo stuff mm-hmm. when i first heard it um but i also felt like it it reminded me a lot of the sound that Winner has had for a while too, like That's very true. like angsty, kind of sentimental, kind of I, I don't know that that vibe where it's it's not really it's not bright. It's more like melancholy, uh, yeah, melancholic sound. Um, but I I don't know. I just I kind of had this inkling that uh, Don was into this sort of style when he was in Pentagon. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I didn't know like it went to this extent and I I'm just so impressed by how he makes it work because the outfits that he had and like they were the styling crazy. it's very very hard to pull off like he, okay. I don't know I, I don't know <laughs> you know who he looked like I don't know this mm-hmm. is gonna be a reference here for y'all he looked like from One Punch Man Genos at one point oh Okay. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. In One Punch Man, I, I don't think I'm pronouncing the name right, but um, One Punch Man has a friend. He he's oh. like an a, half an android, like he's like half android, oh, half oh, man. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. He yeah. looked just like him in the end when he's wearing like the black long sleeve thing, but his his like still you could just see his face. He looked just like that. I thought. Um, uh, but what the, the the dancing though? Yeah, d- very interesting. Very interesting dancing. He's a way better dancer than I thought. Like maybe I just hadn't mm. been paying attention, but he he was going ham. I thought. Um, in terms of Warren, he felt that the song has a nice vibe. Almost feels like a Psy song, which makes sense since he co-wrote it. Um, right. Yeah. And then he wrote, "However, the song is not super interesting, but he might have to listen to it again." I don't agree with that. I thought this was extremely compelling and interesting. I think it's very catchy for me. Like I remember the chorus very mm-hmm. much. Like the part that where you said like, "Dirty money," that, that like that catchy like mm-hmm. repetition. I thought it was really nice, but like, I get it where it's not. It's not like, how would I say? Like it's not an anthem. Like it's not something where it's like very hard yeah. hitting. But it's, I don't know, it made me think a lot about, like, the music video and the it, it was super artistic, and for me, like, the word that keeps coming to my head, unexpected. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's move on to a somewhat, rook- I would consider them a rookie girl group. Yeah, they debuted yeah, in um, 2019. Yeah. So Bandit with Thumb, they're from m Entertainment. If you don't know m that's the company that Chung is under. Their last yes. two songs, they've mm-hmm. only had two A-tracks, have been Dramatic and Hocus Pocus. Here are my notes here. Bandit, I see you now. I see you. You <laughs> on my radar. Um, mm. this was a very Moonbathon trap song, right? Like, this was a, like, yes. And you know your boy. I love Rumor. I love Miso Moonbathon. They could keep this coming because they they had they have um really committed hard to being like the Moonbathon group. If you listen to their other mm, releases, yes. Mm-hmm. My favorite of their other two. I really like Hocus Pocus. Um, same, same. Mm-hmm. My only criticisms of the song was. I prefer the verses to the chorus. I agree. I thought yeah. the, the vocals in the chorus were tremendous, like su- like really good. I felt that the chorus, although there's a drop, I could I felt like it could have dropped a little bit harder or something more memorable. Mm-hmm. Because if we think of like a song like Rumor, that good okay Madhe Bas part is like legendary, mm-hmm. right? Yes. I felt they needed something like that. Um, but overall, they have a way more mature song well way more mature sound than most rookies have which i kind of appreciate from them and Mm. another thing is they only have i think they only have five members and i kind of like the small numbers because i feel like these days groups numbers are just getting bigger and bigger so yeah and then for me oh lastly overall very solid and they fully have my attention now (laughs) okay anita i know you're not the biggest fan of moonbathon um (laughs) <laughs> I am not, <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like for me, I I think for me, I agree with the fact that I, the chorus was didn't really quite catch me as much as the verses or like the leading up to the chorus. Mm. And I think it's because I I was caught by the the lower register that they have, like as vocally, because they're not mm. they're not super high up there. No, I think there's only really one girl who I think has like a higher tone, but yes. The first girl that sang like immediately caught my attention because she she was singing in a, in a lower tone, mm-hmm. and I thought that's that's really interesting, especially uh, for a girl group. But um, this was not my favorite. I think I preferred Hocus Pocus a little bit more. Okay, I could see that for sure. But I mean, it's not a bad song. It's just the genre I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but I definitely want to see them. If they do something else, I would I would really like to see what they do with like a more pop song, mm-hmm. especially since like I mentioned their their voices in general just sound a little bit lower. Yes, they and do I think that's what makes them sound mature. Yeah, they they're great in the mid to lows registry for sure. Mm. Um, Warren wrote, 
oh no, is this Moombathon? Question mark. And then he wrote, oh God, it's Moombathon, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then he wrote, jokes aside, he said that it's a nice Moombathon song, a solid banger. He even used the word banger. One of the wow. better ones he's heard this year in terms of pacing and build up. If you like this genre, you'll like it. However, if you don't, you most likely won't, which is kind of true with us. So he really hit that on, on yeah. the nail on the... Mm-hmm. the what a nail on the head okay yeah whatever i lost my, my train of thought there <laughs> nail but, on the head yep i hit the nail on the head there um lastly let's move on to one team's make this which came out on november 6th so they are from live works company they debuted in 2019 so this year they're rookies last two songs were rolling rolling and vibe and zero music show wins so far i'm gonna i'm gonna first say warren's takes on this song to set the stage uh, okay Warren wrote, this is possibly his favorite boy group song of 2019. Wow. Interesting. Yes. yes. And then he wrote, side chains, synths. I don't know what that means, but he said that. In the verse and the whole drop were sexy as hell. And the verse <laughs> area is minimal, but not boring. He wished that the song was longer and had more content after the second drop. And then he, lastly, oh. he wrote, overall, the arrangement style is not something we see in p- popular K-pop often. Much closer to Dean or other indie yes. PM, PB R&B artists. I agree. That, okay. Mm. My, I'm going to get to my negative points before I praise this song. The choreo for me was a tiny bit lacking. I'm going to throw that out there. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the song, don't sleep on this song. Please check out One Team's Make This. Um, Please, yes. It is so futuristic and retro at the same time now you probably are confused mm. but i'm going to say you know and this is why this song could be in the like, the the like ost official soundtrack for like a tron movie from the 90s or 80s like uh yeah yeah it sounds it like a, it mm. sounds like a retro portrayal of the future if, if you like uh yeah yeah that's exactly what i think it sounds like i said amazing vibes the chorus it has no vocals mm-hmm. but it is an amazing drop like yeah wow <laughs> i don't know who's producing this stuff um Lauren's not here he's the one who normally looks up who's producing this music but whoever did it did mm-hmm. it gave them a fantastic song to work with as rookies considering they're not from a giant company impressive yes what about mm-hmm. you anita i i don't know i feel like for me i've i've liked almost everything this group has put out and i like that they're not sticking to one specific genre because this is this is very different than vibe Mm -hmm. their their previous song but um i don't know i really liked how like warren mentioned this is not something a lot of k-pop groups because it's very very low-key but still has a very like heavy beat Mm -hmm. so like it's 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 not like slow i I don't know how to describe it it's very interesting it has a, a very electronic Mm, I would, maybe EDM would be a good way yeah, to describe it's it. It's an EDM song for it's sure. Very, very, very cool. Um, video wise, maybe it's because I saw this recently as well, but it reminded me a lot of like Wavy. So you know yep, Wavy? Yep, yep. It does. Uh, Moonwalk. Oh, so yeah. So it has an outer space type of thing, mm. that theme. And it, I thought that was really cool. Um, it, it has a, a little bit of a darker theme to it than Moonwalk, but still that, that general. Uh, cinematography and stuff was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like I I did wish the the dancing was a little, could match the song a little bit more, especially in intensity. I thought yes, yeah, I agree. I feel like they could have done that, but overall, I'm really I'm really satisfied with what they've done so far. I really yeah. hope they get more people looking at them now. No, yeah, for sure, because like you should go watch this because it mm-hmm. is surprisingly good. S- s- like. If, if I had to recommend one song this week, it would be this song out of the four we yes. covered. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like that drop is like you would not expect that from this type of group, like a rookie group with a small company. Mm-hmm. You would not expect mm-hmm. this level of production on the song. So it's really cool. Lastly, we got a side piece this week. Um, the boys released the song called Tattoo. OK, so you might be like, why aren't we going to fully review this? We're going to talk about it a little. Don't worry. But the surprising thing is. This is a Japanese debut for the boys. Mm-hmm. And they even grabbed number two on Oricon's daily album chart with this album. Oh, wow. The, yeah. the, the weird thing is, this song is in Korean. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what um, Cracker Entertainment um, was thinking. I'm not saying it's the bad move, 
but it's an interesting move to re- to have a Japanese debut in yeah. Korean. Mm-hmm. I have I've been I did not look up the track list, but from what I remember hearing, only one of the songs on the mini album or what, whatever it is is in Japanese, but the rest of them are in Korean. Interesting. I've interesting. never heard I've never heard that of anyone doing this before. Yeah, I don't think I can name another artist that has done something similarly, but interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of, I'm going to give a little bit, of, uh, a couple takes about this song, though. If this was a Korean A-track, this would have been an absolute great A-banger for them. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been on the level of No Air, which I think is their best song. Oh. It's not a similar mm-hmm. song at all to No Air. It's completely different. Very futuristic sounding. Vocals are out of this world in this song and Mm -hmm. go check out the boys tattoo i know it is getting some love but i think not as much as if it was a korean release like a korean a track because i think a lot of people were confused Mm. very interesting musician maybe the departure of hwal has something to do with it i don't know but yeah because it just seems very Mm. strange that like we're gonna debut in japan but we got a korean song that just seems like a very like weird thing to decide to do as a company mm-hmm. but please check it out also good song so that covers all the releases this week we had like four and a half but because there was two of us they didn't take as long i'm going to <laughs> uh, drop some spoilers the amount of songs for the next couple weeks will be still crazy but overall the amount of announced comebacks is decreasing significantly thank goodness <laughs> thank goodness so the future is looking not as hectic but show winners this week monster x won two shows they won the show and m countdown bringing their yes, total yes. for follow to two mm-hmm. we could talk about them a little bit after but show champion there was no charter winner this week and then taeon won the other three shows music bank show music core inky the mm-hmm. three big shows with spark bringing her total mm-hmm. to three i want to shout out monster x and their um their fan group for supporting them through thick and thin and really coming out strong for them um as yes. someone who's a Wiz one and Eyes one fan, it's a it's it's been a struggle lately, and I respect the amount of like effort they've put into cheering mm-hmm. on their kids. So yeah, I, I really respect that for sure. And I know they're still campaigning um for Wonho. Sorry, I pronounced his name wrong last week. <laughs> by B, but just want to say I respect you and good job. That's that's the main thing for sure. Yeah. Okay, we are at Hot Takes with Harold. This is going to be awkward. <laughs> this is going to be awkward. This is, but on this segment, um, Cousin Harold is going to come on and give his weekly hot take. The crew will react and discuss to the hot take. Note that this is not one of our hot takes, but just a hot take in general. So I will mm-hmm. go get Cousin Harold real quick. All right. We're waiting for Harold. Oh. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> Harold here. Um, Hello. I, I see that you're down to two. Are you guys hiring? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, um, the weekly hot take is idols don't need to be supremely talented to be successful. Mm. Mm. See you next week. If Warren doesn't come again, hire me. Bye. All right. <laughs> Bye. Okay. So that was Cousin Harold. Um, Harold's coming for that seat, number one, but yes. shout out to Harold. <laughs> Okay, idols don't need to be supremely talented to be successful. Hmm. Interesting. Let, you know, of course, we, we see these takes before we record the show, and we get to think about them, so we have interesting thing, things to say. Um, mm-hmm. I 100% agree with this take. Oh, really? 100%. Really? Um, I, I don't think I can... Uh, no, I don't think I can agree that much. Maybe okay. 50%. Okay, okay. I'll tell you why I agree. Um, now, I'm not saying, like, the, the take is they don't need to be supremely talented to be successful, right? For me, mm-hmm. and I'm also going to reiterate, because Warren and I have kind of similar views on this, um, where we assume that talent mm-hmm. equals, like, innate skill. Like, how good are you as a singing singer dancer actor whatever you're doing right for the idol group oh okay Mm -hmm. in my opinion i feel that a lot of the idols we see are not super naturally talented but they are super skilled 
Now, what I mean by that is like, mm-hmm. so I think of talent as like, oh, man, he's got talent. That means like, man, he's got potential. You know what I mean? Like, I see talent as something mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. had when you came through the door, right? Mm-hmm. I think a lot of idols come into the the business like lack of a better term they probably suck a lot when they first start right like they, you you you're hiring <laughs> these idols based on potential like what you think they could be in five ten years right i think that idols train to become better and therefore end up more skilled than a regular person so i think idols because if we think about idols and we think about korean society it's a whole culture of like building yourself up improving yourself right mm-hmm That's why I don't think they need to be supremely talented off the bat. But I will also say, even if they're not that good, right? I still think you can be a successful idol. Mm. Now, this is the part where we might disagree, right? Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of K-pop comes down to being in... Well, a lot of it comes down to timing. Being in the right place at the right time. Now, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that if you're god awful, they're going to keep you around in the company because that's unrealistic, right? Let's say, Mm -hmm. let's say you got a great visual. Let's say you're beautiful, but you're absolute Mm -hmm. like two left feet and tone deaf. (laughs) Over time, they're probably not going to keep you in the group, right? Let's be straight up here. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're like decent, right? I'm not, you don't have to be that talented, in my opinion, if the cards turn out correctly for you. Mm-hmm. And Warren, Warren, one of okay. Warren, Warren's points was that if talent levels were a supreme factor of success, numerous indie artists with experimental music styles would be wildly popular. Mm-hmm. I mean that that's an interesting take. Uh, okay, I need it. I'll let you. I'll let you go for it. <laughs> oh well, well, I feel like I think it has to do with the way I interpret talent mm-hmm. in industry I would ask a lot of what makes a group or an artist very very successful very popular comes down to being very personable very very charming mm-hmm. and like, being able to interact with like interviewers and variety mm-hmm. uh, people successfully and I think that's kind of innate and I I don't I know that companies work on this with their groups and their trainees so that they're able to speak well publicly and they can present themselves very well mm-hmm. but i feel like there's still a level where that's like the mo- the most you can improve without it being like natural so i think it's kind of necessary to have that to be very successful because i can't think of a, of a group where they don't have that and they're really successful okay. at this point so 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 I know what you're trying to quantify the it factor Mm -hmm. right like Mm -hmm. having it like okay here's an example if you've ever seen produce 101 season one Kim Sejong has it like yes (laughs) she has she's one of the the people in the game who like literally personifies what it means to have it like there's just something about that girl Mm -hmm. which is so appealing to everyone and Warren kind of agree with you he said if we expand the content of talent to include a person innate ability to appeal to others right Yeah. Mm -hmm. then he disagrees with the take so he's basically saying there if it comes down to a person having it factor then they need to have it to be successful and in that sense I kind of agree with that and Warren said that there are people who naturally shine when they're on stage and grab the audience attentions that w- and that leads directly to success which mm-hmm. I agree with that so I guess what we're really arguing well not arguing then discussing then is like what does it mean to be super talented right because mm. if, if we if we're talking talent and we only mean singing and dancing which is what a lot of people think K-pop boils down to I think there's other ways you can contribute to a group for sure. You could be the variety person, you could be the visual, and you could just be mediocre in the other things in some groups, I would say. Um, but if we're in quantifying everything, then you probably need to be talented to be successful. Like, I'm talking well, yeah. stage presence, it factor personality, like, how you look on the camera, right? Like, ha- like all that stuff quantified mm-hmm. together, then yeah, you probably gotta be talent. But, on one hand, then we have to make the argument, does talent equals skill right that's that's the, the side yeah, argument I feel like that's a little different <laughs> that's different right because someone being talented i kind of agree that it's it's a little bit innate like you got talent right but whereas mm-hmm. skill is like i could train you up to be skillful so 
it, 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 we're really like arguing a bunch of different small things here and <laughs> as warren said um he said he's i'm not gonna name it but he says his bias is not super talented in singing or dancing but she's a hard worker which he ad- admires and that's what um makes her a good idol and he said of course there are many idols who are talented and then therefore they're successful as well right so mm-hmm. uh, it, it, it's a tough subject um now that i think of it this is what i'll say they might not necessarily have to be super talented at the start of their trainee career right but what i will say is by the time they're ready to debut they better be both pretty talented and super skillful okay anita do you have any final takes on this topic i mean it's just it's just very hard to quantify talent so Mm -hmm. i i feel like it's it's it depends on the person like what you view as being talented or innate mm-hmm. but it, it, i don't know i feel like there's just no certain way to determine like what can be successful in k-pop or not mm-hmm. it's very much case by case basis I yeah. think at this point yeah i think that some kids do get um i'm not gonna call it lucky but they get put in good positions where they can thrive mm-hmm. higher than maybe their talent is but at the same time i do think for the most part a lot of the cream does rise to the top meaning that a lot of the super talented kids are the ones who do make it because mm-hmm. talent is just one of those things that if you got a lot of talent of course it's going to be way easier to get to the top so yeah yeah but yeah there's exceptions in both ways but okay so i think that was an interesting thing um not gonna lie we had some lag spikes <laughs> the, the, yep. the, the ending was really <laughs> tough um we're still working on anita's internet issues going forward but oh my gosh. Uh, yeah okay but i we're i think we're good right now but let's now move on to the news and events from last week i'm gonna first don the eyes one slogan oh. <laughs> and bring out the hitomi fan for this segment oh dear all right so this is the produce series arrests and the effect on eyes one and x1 so before we start please keep in mind that we are recording on november 11th the day before the police briefing on the vote manipulation scandal is set to take place so by the time you're watching this and we're, the, we're so it's the day before the briefing a lot of things might change by the time you're listening to it mm-hmm. so just mm-hmm. keep that in mind but let's let's start this up and i i might even release another video um on our youtube channel if something crazy happens on the 12th so mm-hmm. keep that in mind so back in June, there were rumors of vote manipulation following the live finale of Produce X101. Although Mnet denied, denied it at the time, police soon began an investigation into whether the vote counts were manipulated. So I'm going to do an entire timeline of the recent events. On October 30th, police requested warrants for Produce X101 head producer on Chief Producer Kim, Producer Lee, a CJ ENM staff member with the last name Kim, and a vice president from Starship Entertainment. They are accused of fraud and disruption while colluding to manipulate the vote of the comp- competitive reality show so that happened on the 30th two days later on the first police requested travel bans for all five involved so not a good start um mm-hmm. then on november 5th head producer on and chief producer kim were arrested following an examination of the validity of the arrest warrants the pre-trial um The pre-trial arrest warrants for the other three involved were dismissed, but the warrants in question are known as pre-trial detention warrants. It doesn't mean that that they are indicted yet. It just means that there's an ongoing police investigation and they use these type Mm -hmm. of warrants um, in order to make sure that suspects do not try to destroy evidence, flee the country or other potential issues. And this means um, more or less, it means that Ahn and Kim are at risk for like disrupting the overall investigations and that's why they're detaining them. And this um, came after, well, shortly after reports came out that the Produce X101 producers tried to destroy evidence and that they also received sexual favors f- from agencies. Oh, no. So police believe that PD oh, on no. receives um, services from adult entertainment establishments more than 40 times since July 2018. And this accounts for over 100 million Korean won, which is about $100,000 US. And they think that a lot of this was covered by some of the entertainment agencies the pre-trial warrants themselves were issued after the producers um well they found evidence that the producers tried to destroy evidence like mobile phone messages and other related materials dang 
So Mnet shortly then released the statement of apology and cooperation. This is a, a bit of a quote. They said, once more, we would like to sincerely apologize to all fans and viewers who supported Produce X 101, the contestants of Produce X 101, as well as the agencies and all affiliated personnel. We would like to ask that everyone refrain from speculative reports about artists that were affected by this incident. By this incident. Also on the 5th, 5th was a dumpster fire. Seoul police <laughs> conducted everything. new search and seizure raids at CJ e &M and other Produce X101 companies. No, no, no. On the 6th, the following day, um, Head PD on reportedly admitted to manipulating the results for Produce 48 and Produce X101. Oh. He came out and denied manipulating the results from seasons 1 and 2, though. So, so he's saying... Produce 48, which resulted in Eyes 1 is rigged, and Produce X 101, which resulted in X 1 is rigged. But mm. he said that the first two seasons were not. On November 7th, this is the sad day for Wiz Ones like myself, all Eyes 1 fans, and a lot of people who just mm -hmm. like K-pop in general. Off the record, mm. which is Eyes 1's agency, announced that Eyes 1's comeback media showcase and comeback show had been canceled. So the media showcase is where the press comes and talks to the artist. I get why they would cancel that for sure. Like <laughs> you don't want the press mm -hmm. talking to the kids right now. The comeback show got canceled and I that's when I got worried. I mentioned this in that one video I have on the channel right now where I reacted to a lot of this stuff. But I was still confident that we would get the comeback. Like I was thinking maybe we just mm -hmm. won't have a showcase, but there's like a yeah. hundred thousand pre-sales. We should just have the comeback. I was completely wrong with that. And that and off the record later that day announced that eyes won't come back with their first full album bloom is is what i'm going to be calling it it's bloom with iz at the end was mm -hmm. that was scheduled to be released today on november 11th was has been postponed in a statement they said hello this is mnet we would like to sincerely apologize for causing so much concern with our past problems after analyzing the viewers opinions acutely we have deducted to postpone to postpone the release of eyes one's first full album set originally for november 11th <sighs> I mean, as a whiz one, this was so sad. Mm -hmm. oh. Man, I pre-ordered all the albums that got refunded too by this by like now. So oh, yeah, they got refunded like two days ago. It's like Dang. really unfortunate. Um, the following day again on the eighth, which was let's see what day of the week was the eighth. The eighth was the Friday. Reports revealed that. PDs determined the top 20 trainees for Produce X 101 and Produce 48 before public voting even started. Ooh. Okay, so well, to break that down, it means that the producers of this show essentially shortlisted 20 kids that they thought would that they wanted to be the final 20. What the and heck? What it reads to me is that as the show went on, they picked the final 12 out of those 20. Or at least a majority mm -hmm. of them. Now, if we think about the show, the rankings in the finale were often controversial for especially the last two seasons. Um, mm -hmm. Them pick well, it, since it came out that they picked the final twenty, it kind of makes sense based on how much screen time certain kids would get. Oh yeah. Like, For sure. that's the unfortunate truth of the situation. But today on November 11th, um, some more news came out. So rumors were spreading wildly online that the labels of Eyes 1 and X1 were discussing disbandment. However, and right. then came out and stated nothing has been confirmed regarding the possibility of disbandment. Because the investigation is still underway, we are waiting for the results. They basically said we're still discussing what we're going to do with the future promotions, but we are not discussing disbandment at this time. Mm hmm. Um, there was supposed to be a police day um, debriefing on the produce manipulation investigation scheduled for today on the 11th. It's being postponed till tomorrow on the 12th, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I think that since Mnet is and CJ are going to be the ones making a call on what happens to the group, that they're waiting for these debriefings to come out. Right. Mm. Um, in terms of effects, how is this affecting Eyes 1 and X1? Um. Eugene and all of Eyes One were edited out of My Little Television Two, which was a pretty oh. big deal for them. Yeah. Also, um, I think Yena and Wonyoung were set to appear on Idol Room. No, not Idol Room. They were all supposed to appear on Idol Room. Yena and Wonyoung were supposed to appear on Do Re Mi Market, and those episodes both got canceled. 
a little bit of good news was that Aizwan's appearance on Busted 2, which is on Netflix, proceeded as normal. So they're in episode 8, if you want to watch that. Mm -hmm. And finally, their movie, Eyes on Me, the movie, was postponed. Oh, dear. If you're a fan oh of X1, um, some other stuff came out about X1. So X1 and CJ have reportedly not signed contracts yet. The labels of the X1 members came to the decision that they wanted to wait and monitor the results of the investigations before signing the contracts. Um, they are currently promoting without one. But this is... So, some other people came out to clarify what this means. So, Eyes One, they did not have contracts for the first six months. So, this is not mm. unheard of. Mm -hmm. But it was also reported that X1 has not been paid since their debut. What? Yeah, but... I don't know. I don't know if this is true, but other people are saying this is quite normal because some groups get paid only quarterly, and mm -hmm. since X One has only been around for about three months, it sort of lines up with that. Right now, the Mama appearances for both of these groups is up in the air, and lastly, X One is still slated to appear at the V Live Awards, which will be happening um, uh, amidst all this controversy. Okay. Oh my God, we finally got through it all. <laughs> um. As a whiz one, and I, I mentioned this in the other video, I'm super conflicted because I feel bad for all the kids involved because they're told to just go on the show, try hard. If people like you, you'll make the group. Um, the thing I don't like that's going on is that they are blaming Eyes One and X One, the groups, not the companies, not the show. They're blaming the groups that's just that's people. ridiculous people <laughs> like like don't hate the player hate the game you know what I mean? like that's yeah. a phrase the system these were adults made by i mean these were not adults these they are adults but they're bad adults these were decisions made by adults mm -hmm. behind the scenes by cj by the produce staff potentially mm -hmm. by the agencies which we're starting to believe is true um don't blame the artist like please don't yeah and and i think a lot of whiz ones like myself and fans of x1 are in a weird position because number number one it's an unfortunate truth but there's not much we can do other than publicly support them mm -hmm. i see a lot of people are worried because cj's the last one the the they're gonna have the final say on what happens to the groups mm -hmm. in my perspective Losing the groups is not a good look for CJ. CJ is their overarching company over off the record. And I think it's Swing Entertainment is the one that's managing mm -hmm. X1. Yep. For mm -hmm. them to lose those groups means they make no more money. So financially, right. it doesn't make sense to them. What it does make sense for is for the agency to want the kids back because then they could accelerate their timelines. But at the same time, being in those groups bringing in these groups are well is a big opportunity for a lot of the members of these of the both teams because mm -hmm. some of them are from small agencies maybe they weren't doing well at their own companies overall though i feel that if cj alone has a say they'll want to keep the groups together because they think they can still profit i don't know what the agencies are feeling though mm. what do you think about that like little <laughs> morsel to me, it's very tricky because um, I I don't blame the trainees. I feel like everybody mm -hmm. that participated in the program comes with the idea like, hopefully, if I do my best, I can be in the final group, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it wasn't like that from the beginning. Get go. It was all set up. It's me. It's just I just feel terrible for the all the participants. Okay. But even even now, I just feel like the people that made it to the play for Ice One and X One. I just I just at this point, I I don't know if it's more harmful to be associated with the program with Produce One Hundred One to them as people like i feel like it might be more harmful to them at this as the, at this moment and i i feel like cj is trying to calculate that right now like will it will it pay off to push through or like is this really gonna tank them 
Okay. Um, I'll give my thoughts on that. You liked mm-hmm. a little there, but it was okay. We got through it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, for me, well, one of the phrases I like to, like, I go by my life that is like, time heals all wounds, right? Mm. I personally think if they disband the groups now, each of the members will carry the legacy that they were in that rig thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. A couple things. I think that if Eyes One, they reannounce that they're going to have the comeback, I think the sales of the album will be even higher than it was before all this stuff broke. Mm. Because I think the support for them will be much greater. I am speculating that initially the police report was going to be very negative towards the groups and the outlooks, right? Mm-hmm. Public support in Korea has shifted from outrage to like understanding that we shouldn't be blaming the groups. Mm. And I think that's why they're delaying the um, briefing. That's a complete speculation, but that's what I think is going on. Right. Mm. I think if you keep Eyes One together and X One together, it is dependent on the real rankings not coming out. Well, yeah, that's what they're they're preying on. <laughs> if, if the real rank, like as a was one, if the real ranking comes out and we know specifically who was rigged in and who did not make it because of the rigging, mm-hmm. it's over. That's if, like if for both groups. For I think both groups, it's, it's over. over. Both. If that happens, because there's going to be infighting within the fandom about sp- yeah, they're going to be yeah. targeting specific kids, not just the group. I don't think the the groups would be able to withstand that. I think. As long as these debriefings don't drop anything crazy, like, may, like, by crazy I mean like if kids knew if the kids knew about it, I doubt they did. I am like ninety nine point nine percent sure. I, I yeah, I doubt it. But unless something like that comes out, I don't think there's going to be much more damage to this. Um, and I think that if Eyes One and X One, um, promote more, a lot of people will say yeah, their circumstances coming together wasn't the greatest. But Mm -hmm. look at what they can accomplish as a team. Right. Now, maybe maybe I'm a little... I'm definitely a little biased. What am I saying? (laughs) I'm biased because I am a whiz one. 100%. I've never had this sort of situation before. Um, Mm. I am so conflicted, so worried, so in pain. (laughs) Mentally and emotionally over this whole thing. Um yeah you know like when it was looking bad i was the only thing i was thinking was like the silver lining and for me that was like i had the privilege of seeing them at cape con new york like i was already right, thinking at yeah. that level like wow that's how that's how like depressed i was about oh, this no. <laughs> but i am willing to stand up and fight for this as much as i can we have this platform um mm. this is about all i can do Oh, I'm trying not to get emotional here. Um, <laughs> um, I really hope that even if you're not an Eyes One or X One fan, you could empathize with the fact that if this, if your favorite group was in a similar crap situation, like, mm. what do you think you would want to happen to your group? You know what I mean? Right. This is the fault of the companies. I think it's still stupid that CJ gets the final say in this, even though they're the ones who've gotten into this mess, right? Like something mm. about that ethically mm. feels wrong to me. Um, mm. I hope Eyes One can make it through this. I hope X One can make it through this because I think it is a huge disservice to the hard work that the members have put in to get to this point. Yeah, I agree. And to just send them back to their companies now would be to like admit it would like you would be going back as a loser, not as a victor. Do you know what I mean? Like, like not as a Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're losers, but I'm saying like you came back because we lost. Do you know what I mean? Not because like I want I want the groups to get promotions because I want them to go down swinging. If the public doesn't like them anymore, so be it. But I want them to at least have the chance to prove that. I mean, you see, this is where I get conflicted because I, I feel like I'm afraid. I'm afraid for how the public will react if they do continue with promotions. I could see at, that. And, and, and then this, this bad reputation and like mm-hmm. this, 
bad sentiment from the public carries on to the killer disbandment after the official group is done promoting Mm -hmm. so like in a sense I, i i agree that i wish the public sentiment is feels more empathy towards them now Mm -hmm. now that everything is coming out like this was set up from the beginning from from the producer side and the company side Mm -hmm. so it's it's not like it wasn't their fault like they also deserved to be in the group as much as the other people as well but Mm -hmm. they were just set up i don't know yeah i'm just hoping like a couple things i'm hoping nothing crazy comes out and i'm hoping that the real rankings don't come out to be honest those are the two scenarios mm, yeah. which i think would end them um at this point there's not much more we could do obviously i'm very tense today um at least in this topic because stuff will probably come out tonight or tomorrow right like oof. but overall if you're an eyes one fan or an x1 fan stay strong um i know there's not much you can do personally but sending good thoughts talking to other people is always a good thing um at the end of the day what happens is going to happen and at least we can say that we went down fighting as a fandom if something bad does happen do you know what i say like we never gave up hope yeah overall though really tough subject for me um mm-hmm okay let's move on um <laughs> maybe happier news depending on on what side are you on on this um cl officially leaves yg entertainment so cl reportedly left yg on november 7th mm. sports today reported it the former 21 member did not renew her contract with yg entertainment after negotiations on the same day yg came, yge came out and said that they are still negotiating with her but the following day on the 8th they confirmed that she left the company <laughs> <laughs> so CL debuted as a member of 21 through YG Entertainment in 2009. Following 21's disbandment in 2016, CL renewed her contract with YG and promoted as a solo artist. However, she did not release music in over two years. Um, mm-hmm. Following this announcement, YGE deleted all of CL's official Twitter and Facebook accounts. We don't know if she wanted that or the company wanted that, but that's just some food mm. for thought. This is a great move for CL. Terrible move for YG. Um, I think that CL as an artist at this company, while she was in 21, things were fine. Once they yeah. went into solo, I think they completely shunted her m- momentum and hindered her as an artist. Of course. Mike, for her to finally get out of the company is a big deal because imagine having your life on hold for like two years like mm. other than doing some like i know she did some stuff with black eyed peas um right mm-hmm. she made some shows that like i mean she did a lot of f- i don't know if she did a lot of ads but she did a lot of fashion stuff is what i was seeing right um mm. but at her core she's a musician right she's an artist and she hasn't been able to do art in two years like the basement <laughs> she was yeah like the yg basement is for real with this scenario um mm. and you got you got things to add with this one to be honest i'm surprised it took this long yes <laughs> like i feel like after she decided to go solo i i thought she was gonna like if it didn't work out like she was gone but mm. i don't know i guess it's it's a form of loyalty like she started off in this company mm-hmm. like she was in 21 and uh, maybe it's, it's a reflection of how things are going currently maybe yeah. how she sees the future i wish the best for her and i'm i feel really bad that she hasn't been able to do anything for two years yeah the the thing i don't understand is cl after 2016 um could have jump ship she could have been like mm. 21 was one part of my artistic career slash life she mm-hmm. could have been like, I want new challenges, maybe make my own company, maybe join something else, go solo, whatever, right? What pisses me off is the fact that she showed loyalty to the company and then the lo- yes. the company did not show any loyalty to her as an artist. It looks really bad on YG's part. 
and the and like in an alternate reality even if yg had all this terrible stuff come out it should have been like cl gd picking up the company from the bootstraps and saying we we're, we're still here we ain't going anywhere mm-hmm. and now like so i know yg in the future has big bang contract renewal up too mm-hmm. if they leave this is like it might be it's it over. it might it's be over. It. um but overall bad for bad look for yg because the whole history yeah. makes them look terrible mm-hmm. really happy for mm-hmm. cl that she finally gets to do what she wants to do yeah. lastly global partnerships for super m nct127 and g idol so the first one, SM Entertainment and Creative mm-hmm. Artist Agency, CAA, have signed an agency contract to support global activities of Super M and NCT 127. Some of you might not know this, but um, Creative Artist Agency, also known as CAA, is the largest talent agency in the world. One of the largest ones. They are mm-hmm. absolutely massive. The groups will be using TV programs, advertisements, and more to promote their group and brand to a larger audience. That's pretty big it, it, i didn't even know it existed like I, I don't know um oh let me get the second one out so g idol signs with asian agent that is the name of the thing like asian agent um oh, okay. for their u.s management and international strategy what this is signaling to me is that they in the next year or so there's going to be heavy investment in getting the group exposed overseas even more mm, yeah yep yeah. um we talked about k-pop generations um recently and we always like a couple maybe like a month or so ago and warren's big thing was that generation shift when something changes in the industry Mm. i think this generation is going to shift and the focus will be on global expansion meaning lots of concerts internationally lots of artists trying to make songs in both korean and english potentially Mm -hmm. i think that's going to be the thing that's going to happen over the next two years yeah starting because hmm. from my perspective um we're st- we started to see it this past year for instance blackpink twice and red velvet all had concerts in the united states mm-hmm. when can you ever say that all the top tier girl groups have done that right we had like super m's coming to the all over the u.s i know they're doing they're doing mm-hmm. the english thing bts had a bunch of concerts in the u.s oh yeah 17's uh, having it in the u.s everyone's starting to come to the u.s it's becoming quite common right and for very very early groups too like like um one of the future news we're going to talk about is like 80s is having yeah. a u.s leg of their tour and they're not even doing small venues they're doing big venues like they're big yeah big venues it's surprising i know one us did a um did a fan sign slash showcase type tour thing in new york city it's coming wow. to new york like it's popping off soon for the u.s mm-hmm. fans i think that's going to be the new shift for sure and I think it's good because Super M, NCT One Two Seven, G Idol all have a very Western friendly sound. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I I, just, I think it's going to be a incredible thing to see over the next two years how far they're going to go with it. Hmm. Also, it's like for a group like G Idol, you have Chinese members, you have Mini who's Thai. Like, there's a lot of right. things you can do here with this group. So very interesting. Quick takes. I don't know how you're going to react to this, but. Big Hit Entertainment rumored to be acquiring Cube. What? It's complete what? speculation at this point, but following the speculation, Cube Entertainment stocks surged. Like, what? It surged so much that, um, for those of you who don't know, in stock markets, generally, if a stock jumps way too much in one day, they freeze it. It froze? It froze. Oh, dear. For the rest of the day because it jumps wow. so much in one day like what so cube is home to bto um b2b clc pentagon and g idol those are their main four groups people are saying they might acquire them so they have stuff to do when bts goes to the military that was one of the things i was seeing Mm. interesting if this happens they are i know big hit might be the number one company right now right Mm -hmm. if they acquire cube they're 100 percent the number one company yeah <laughs> right like <laughs> pretty for sure. much because not only do you have bts you have a bunch of like high tier groups yeah i know man it's crazy because they're gonna have um source cube and big hit like together they're getting everyone i know right 
what's going on here? And I remember pre-produce rigging scandal, we thought that CJ conglomerate was going to be the the big like the next one to like the included in like the big four, right? Mm. But I think it's just going to be a four with big hit SM, big hit JYP, and maybe YG, depending on what happens. You're right. Isn't that crazy though? Like I, I can't believe. I would this never one. have thought. <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier, ATs announces US leg of the Fellowship Map the Treasure World Tour. ATs have unveiled five cities coming up in the United States leg of their tour, including Newark, Ooh. Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, and Los Angeles. For scope, they're going to the Prudential Center in Newark, which hosts about um, 20,000 fans, and then the Forum in LA, mm-hmm. which is around the same amount too. That's crazy. Huge. That's huge. That is huge for a group in their second year. Like man, I know Anita. You you might be trying to go to the Chicago one. Um, I want to? Can I go? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's on a Sunday for Chicago because Newark gets the Friday uh, date. But yeah, overall great news for ATs. Next one, Becky Edin launches her own independent label, Blue Vinyl. Oh, nice! I think it's gonna be a one woman um label, and she is one of the hottest commodities in the I'm gonna call it Korean mainstream ballad scene for sure for sure she's like top yes. tier right now with ben i would say yep. um next big bangs taeyang and daesung discharged from the military that's big oh boy it's coming <laughs> now the four well big bang minus Sungri, of course um are all now out of the military we got to see what's going to happen are they going to come back for the throne we'll just have I to don't see don't know honestly lastly police reportedly book yg for covering up former icon members bi drug use so oh boy on november 6th the gyeonggi do southern provincial police academy agency stated that yg has been officially booked on charges of threatening harboring a suspect and occasional an occupational breach of trust he was unable to attend the questioning on the 6th but he did appear on the 9th for a total of 14 hours oh my god what so the charges are he is alleged to have threatened former trainee han so he I know she's controversial, into mm-hmm. remaining silent during the BI drug use investigation in 2016. Oh. We'll have to see what's going to go on. I know he's not the head of YG Entertainment anymore, but what happens to him reflects on the company, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lastly, in terms of upcoming releases, well, comebacks for next week. November 12th, Tuesday, Nature and Elris. November 14th, mm-hmm. Thursday, Rainbow is having a surprise 10th year anniversary reu- reunion. Wow. Mamamoo and Intuit and November 18th, Monday, Golden Child and Our Lord and Savior, Ayu, is finally coming back. Ooh, nice. In terms of confirmed comeback news, nothing. Oh? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which means that after the really? next, like, three weeks, everyone's just gonna, like, just focus on the end of the year shows, it seems. <laughs> Like, I'm sure there's stuff coming out in December, but we had no new comeback news this week. So surprising. Wow. Let's rest. (laughs) Lastly, in terms of state of the nation. Okay. I got four points here. Um, First one, Busted Mm -hmm. 2. It's a, um, it's like a scripted variety show with Yu Mm Jae-sok, Lee Gwangsu is sort of in this season, Lee Seung-gi, Sejong is in it, Mm Sehun from EXO. It's like a mm-hmm, detective yeah, yeah. sort of variety show, but it's pretty scripted as well, but it's very entertaining. I watched the entire mm-hmm. season, all 10 episodes. Oh, wow. So go check it out. A lot of fun. Um, also, for me, a lot of worrying about Eyes 1, which has been pretty terrible on my mental health. Um, oh, no. G-Idol. I oh? am a, ever since we watched Queendom, I'm a gigantic fan, and I am having bias confusion right now, is what I'm going to call what it. What do you mean? What do you mean? I am confused between whether I am a mini bias or a me oh. bias. Oh. Surprising, right? Surprising, yeah. I might update you guys later, but it is mini and me are the two that are wrecking me right now. Um interesting traditionally i was a yugi fan too so just gonna put that out there (laughs) um lastly today ladies code appeared on a tv show and it was the first time that they talked about their car accident in full Mm -hmm. there are translated articles it is a tough read but i think it brings a lot of closure to the events in the past the tragic events that happened to them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um anita what have you been doing this past week in the world of k-pop 
Well, I've just been stressing out about Produce 101 Japan, <laughs> basically. Man, I, I'm stressing about the Korean produce. You're stressing about the Japanese produce. <laughs> a lot of stress. Yes. Just the produce series induces a lot of stress in general. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Elimination is this week. So that's going to be exciting. <laughs> um, and aside from that, yeah, just been listening. Oh, oh. It's not technically K-pop, but you. I feel like most listeners will recognize these names. So, um, Penomeko, mm -hmm. Elo, and Gray okay. uh, recently released a single called Love. So, Love? question mark, mm -hmm. And it's really, really good. So, I would definitely check it out. That's what I've been listening to repeatedly, repeatedly. since it came out. Okay. Yes. It's really good. Uh, but, yeah. That's pretty much it. Okay. But, um... No Warren this week. We still ran pretty long, Anita. We are at... Well, actually, Yay. I can't tell because we're going to need a cut in the middle. But we ran we pretty long. <laughs> um, Warren should be back next week, if not the week after that. Um, he is, as I said, moving to New York. He wishes he could join us, but he cannot, unfortunately. That. But I think it was fun, just the two of us. After we got over the lagging issues, we were pretty solid, yes. I would say. We'll try to figure that out in the future. No promises, though. Um, but, but, Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, this has been Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. Please sign up for the um, Jopping giveaway if you're still yep. here. Yes. That means um, you comment on this video on YouTube or you leave a comment in the Jopping giveaway channel on Discord. I'm Doug. I'd like to thank Anita for joining me. Um, LOL, Warren's not here. As a quick <laughs> reminder, leave us feedback, questions, and hot takes at sojutalkpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe to the Soju Talk YouTube channel. Join the Soju Talk Discord and be a, a part of the Soju Talk Nation. Mm -hmm. Links down below. We will see you all next week when we get to finally review IU's new song. Yes. Bye. Love Bye. Eyes One. Support them, please. <laughs> okay. Hey!